Hello and welcome. The world is facing yet another round of geopolitical challenges. Let's try and understand what's happening and what it means, particularly in the year ahead. I'm now joined by Jem Duna, Chairman AB Consultancy and Investment Services Turkey, but also, and more importantly, former Turkish Ambassador to the United Nations and the European Union. Uh, Mr. Duma, thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you very much. So how do we interpret uh, what's happening in, uh, in Asia today? And uh, what does this mean for, uh, let's say, two or three things? One is geopolitical concerns broadly, and secondly, energy security. Geopolitical concerns are not improving at all. Uh, unfortunately, every day we face another um, crisis of all kinds. Uh, as you have uh, probably know that there was an incident in, on the Turkish border with, with Syria. Syrian aircraft being Syrian shot aircraft. down. So these are things which is sort of uh, exacerbating the already existing uh, tensions in the area. Mm. And, and, you know, uh, let me ask you about the Russian occupation of the Crimean Peninsula. Uh, what does that mean from a, not just a, I mean, the overall geopolitical stability, but in terms of energy, uh, energy security, and all the things that get most nations upset. Well, I mean, as everybody is aware, the energy requirements of Western European countries are met to a large extent by the Russian natural gas. And it so happens that it you know, goes through Ukraine and uh, all the rest of it. Uh, the cessation of Crimea and its um, decide to join the Russian Federation is of course, is a serious, serious issue which has no legal basis mm -hmm. as such. Uh, and I think the Western nations are going to react to that. But this reaction may be not that effective because um, they are, like I said, so much intertwined with their own energy requirements. It remains to be seen. But as the news today appeared that they are uh, going to be formally expelled from the G8. Mm. Uh, that, that's one thing which is uh, isolating Russia to a large extent or taking off the, uh, the title of uh, being a G8 member, which will be detrimental, of course. Right. Where does uh, Turkey stand in all of this? I mean, Turkey is facing its own problems. You talked about the, the, the border issue with Syria. Mm. Uh, there are other internal uh, concerns. Uh, and, and there is this sort of mm. un unrest in that part of the world. Well, the uh, continuing in the in the um, you know Ukrainian crisis, we are of course seriously concerned about this because Russia, from time to time, is our main trading partner. We have got uh, very elaborate economic relations with Russia, so we wouldn't like to jeopardize those relations at all. But at the same time, we cannot accept the uh, you know uh, swallowing up of. Uh, Crimea as well. So we have to be balancing that uh, very, very uh, carefully. The point is about uh, what's going on in Turkey. Uh, you must bear in mind that this is an election year. Mm. And the next year will also be an election year. We mm. have first uh, this coming Sunday the local elections, and then the, um, uh, in August we will have the presidential election, and next year, probably around May, uh, we will have the general elections, the parliamentary elections. So whatever kind of rhetoric you hear from Turkey must be evaluated within the perspective of the elections sure. as such. Sure. So the shooting down of the plane or um, the banning of Twitter are issues which you have to bear the present political atmosphere in mind and then, uh, you know, you cannot shut down permanently Twitter or any of the social media, and you must not because it's, after all, the freedom of expression. It's you know one of the basic tenets of the democracy that we claim to be. And so, therefore, you feel that if, uh, as as things return to normal post elections, yes. uh, after all the rounds, uh, I mean, these kind of issues are unlikely to crop up, or at least in the same way. Yes, because this is a subject which has taken a, a, its place in agenda for a number of times. Previously, we banned YouTube, mm. uh, and that was, you know, corrected as well. So, I do wish that after the elections, that uh, things will normalize right. and cease to become subjects of the elections. Right. 
the last, last question. So what, what do the young people of Turkey want today and uh, uh, where, where, what, what does all of this uh, or does all of this fit into? Well, uh, the young people in Turkey is um, concerned with the economy, of course, because they need jobs. Uh, the jobless percentage in Turkey is about 9.9% or 10%, let's mm -hmm. say. But the uh, youth unemployment is about 18%, mm -hmm. which is, in comparison to many other countries, are good. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't solve the problem. So uh, the young people are concerned about their future. And they are uh, you know, a part of the social media at the same time. So I think they uh, would need to you know, um, get used to the idea of uh, uh, this new communications and the new economy that is shaping all around them and in, in Turkey as well. Right, and uh, what is the one thing that you feel uh, that makes you optimistic about the next year for Turkey? Well, the economy is uh, still Strong. ticking along, and uh, there are, of course, indicators which are varying, but by and large, we have weathered the storm, I think, and it's, uh, it's uh, getting, uh, you know, as long as the economic performance stays as it is, mm. we will have no serious problems. Right. Mr. Cem thank you very much for speaking with us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.